One, two, three, four, five. Is it started? Is it? Is it? Yes, it is. Okay, hello everyone. And again, today I want to create a simple puzzle game and share it with you guys. What is this will be about? Hello, Mahip. What it will be about? It will be about a vending machine, and about a door, about a key, and about a set of coins. So, to open a door, I will need to put some coins into the vending machine, to buy a key, and to open this door with a key, to proceed to next level. So, let's do it. I select all of the sprites that I will be in need and there we go and drag and drop them into my project folder okay of course first game object will be a doorway i put it into my hierarchy and to be about here next game object will be an arrow arrow which as usual will help us to proceed to the next level when it when i click it hello hello everyone this arrow of course will be will have a collider to detect mouse clicks there we go. Next game object is a door. I take one and put it into my scene. And let it be about here. I set order layer to higher value, so it will be rendering in front of the doorway and front of the arrow. arrow. This door also will have a collider to detect mm, collisions with the key later. So while we're here, I add a box collider to my door and set it as a trigger as well. Hello, hello, hello Samir. Next game objects will be coins. So here is my coin sprite, which I have to split into different ones so I select my coin sprite go to sprite mode click to multiple and hit apply and after that I can go to sprite editor to split this whole sprite into separate images I hit slice automatic mode is okay for me and I hit slice and now after hitting apply I have four different coins and I put them I select all of them and to avoid creating an animation I hit alt I press alt key and drag and drop these coins into my hierarchy here they are coin coin five one three and two now i should rename these coins so this will be coin five since it's have since it has five this coin will be coin three this one is two and this one is this one is one okay all of these coins will have a colliders to detect mouse clicks set it as a trigger also these coins will have a rigid body to detect collisions 
because to detect collisions one of the game objects should have a rigid body component attached I said it is kinematic and set slipping mode to never slip so um, if I leave it as as it was then the collisions will be detected a bit not not as often as I wanted so to avoid this issue I set this rigid body slipping mode to never slip so collisions will be detecting always okay now I will be dragging these coins with the script I already created one which was named drag game object and just to save us some time I take one here it is and drag and drop it into my project folder let's see what's inside of it what is that open it up here it is here we have a mouse position delta x and delta y to avoid jumping our coin to the mouse position when we click it here is where we uh, calculate this delta x and delta y and on mouse drag we drag this game object so i select all of the coins and add this um, drag object script to them and now i should be able to drag my coins with mouse let's check it out yes i can drag it okay i love your videos thank you very much okay next game object will be a vending machine it will be quite a complicated one so it uh, comprises several game objects so i take vending machine and put it into my scene here it is also this vending machine will have some game objects as childs as children sorry and also this vending machine will have a, a display that will that will show us the the value or the number of coins that i already put into this mm, vending machine so to buy a key later i will have to put uh, an amount of money equals to 38 dollars uh, and here on that display I will see how much money I put into my vending machine. So, for doing that, I click right, right click on vending machine and add a canvas, which will contain uh, that text game object and a button later. So here is the canvas and here I have to change render mode to from screen space to cam not camera to wall space and drag and drop main camera into event camera slot. And now I want to out uh, to put this canvas right here on my vending machine. So I take this canvas change its width and height here it is and outline my vending machine like that so now vending machine has canvas attached as a true as a child
next game object here will be a display. So I right click on canvas and create new UI image. UI. UI image, which will be display. Yes, a display. As we can see, it's a little too big, so I set width and height some about like this, or maybe even smaller. 0 0.75, 0 0.75, I think it's okay. Yeah, pretty, pretty nice. Let it be about here. And I have a display sprite just for this display game object. So I select display, take this sprite and drag it right into source image slot. There we go. Next game object here will be a UI text mesh pro. Yes, let it be text mesh pro for a change. I select it and once I selected for the first time i need to import some essentials essentials to my project i guess they are imported and i can close this window so here is my text and it is quite big as well so i make it a bit smaller Here it is. I don't see any text here. Why? Because font size is too big, as I suppose. Yes. So let's do it like that font size will be maybe 0 0.5 is too small 0.75 but 0 0.75 is too big then let it be 0 0.5 0 .5. and line this text in the middle the text container maybe a bit smaller yeah that looks fine for me now and to make this um, display look look nicer I add some glare effect to this display so I create another one UI image and name it as glare um, display glare display and of course it's too big and it will be 0 0.75 and at a glare display sprite and drag and drop it right here. It's a little too big as well. I make it a bit smaller like that and change its alpha channel so it will be a bit more transparent. There we go looks pretty fine let's take a look yeah looks cool ah no not that cool as I want it to be so I select text and I should rename it by the way it will be named as in sum and I want to change it's color tint to something like that. Yeah, pretty cool. Okay. 
The next game object here will be a UI button, which will be used to reset to reset our scene in case if we put too much money into this vending machine and exceed this value. Just, just let it be. So I right click on canvas and create new UI text mesh pro button. Here it is. And of course it's too big and I make it smaller. There it is. No, point seventy five as I remember. Yeah. Let it be zero point seventy five. And I have a couple of sprites for my button. And as I did it with a coin sprite, I have to slice it. So I set it sprite mode to multiple, hit apply and go to sprite editor and slice it in automatic mode and make them to be equal height, height and hit apply. Where is my button? Let's rename it as reset button. Yes, reset button. And now I have two sprites for my button. First sprite goes here in the source image. And here in transition, I change color tint to sprite swap. And the second sprite goes into pressed sprite. Yes, pressed sprite. And now, if I hit play and check it out how it works, yes, I can click this button with this cool pressing effect. Okay. Next game object here will be will be coin hole. So this coin hole will receive coins. Will receive coins. So I take this game object and drag and drop it into vending machine so it becomes a child of my vending machine. Here it is and I put it right about here. And maybe I can make it a bit bigger. Yeah, pretty cool. And this uh, coin hole, by the way, I have to set this order layer to say one, so it will be rendered in front of the vending machine, which has this value set to zero. Yeah. So this coin hole will have a collider to detect collisions with coins, which will be put into this coin hole circle collider and set it as a trigger and the final game object will be a key here it is here it is at the beginning it will be kind of inside the vending machine and when i put enough money into this vending machine this key will drop down into this hole, into this niche, so I will be able to take it and uh, open this door. <laughs> and open this door with this key. Hello from South Africa, it's nice and we're here. <laughs> Hello from Russia. It's nice and cold here, <laughs> but it's nice. Best Unity tutorial channel in the world. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay, so here's our key. So initially it, it is inside this vending machine. And as I suppose it is 
beneath this uh, glass, glass. And to make this glass a bit more cute, I also add a glare effect on on this glass. So I take this glare bending game object and drag and drop it and drag and drop it into the vending machine as well. Zero, zero, here it is. And also, sorry, I have to set order layer to, for for example, to, and let it be five. By the way, key will be four. So it will be, the key will be in front of the vending machine and behind this glare effect behind this glare effect sprite. And I take this uh, glare bending object and put it about here. Pretty cool. Let's take a look. Yeah, pretty nice. So I will take this key, uh, these coins and drop uh, they are rendered behind all of this stuff, so I have to. So I have to select my coins and set order layer to ten. And by the way, canvas canvas should have this order layer set to one. To make sure that it will be rendered in front of the vending machine. Coin hole is one. Clear vending is five. Key is four. And coins are at this can. Let's check it out again. So wait. I take this coin, put it into this vending machine. Uh, coin value counter increases. And when I have enough money inside this vending machine, this key should drop into this niche. So let's do it. And of course, key will have a box collider. So I will be able to drag it. RNG? What is RNG? You mean PNG? Ping? Do you? So, I suppose all of our game objects. What is it? What is it? Ah, button. Button text, random number generation. No, no random number. Just manually put put some coins in here. I could do this, but I want to keep this project as simple as possible. But I have some videos on my channel about random generating. Lots of videos, actually. But here, it's just a set of coins without any random generation feature. Okay. So where were, where were we? So now I suppose it's time to create some scripts. That will be. Ah, I forgot to add a drag script, drag object script in to my key, so I will be able to drag it. There we go. Let's check it out. Yeah, I can drag it, and it is rendered behind the door, which is an issue for now. So. Let's fix it. Door has order layer set to five. Let it be four. Ah, 
and key has four as well so let this door door will have this value set to three door is three arrow is two doorway is zero key is four so now it will be rendered in front of the door yeah very good he's doing it now but i think this script is already written earlier of course they they were written because i had to try it out but we will create them we will create it we will create them from the beginning so you will see so you will see it okay the first script will be for coin i create new c sharp script and name it as coin i could do this without creating this script earlier but um, this stream will be much longer that way because I'm sure I will have lots of issues with them and I don't want to I don't want you to watch how I looking for mm, that issues and trying to fix them up so it's much easier to create them before and to recreate them once again and by the way i forgot to remove this text object from the button because i don't need it so right click it and delete there we go okay coin script is created select coins and add the script for to them coin script and open it in visual studio so what's inside this script? Let's see. First of all, we need to... We need to get the value of our coin. And this value is this character, which is 5, 3, 2, or 1. So this value will be passed to vending machine. So it will, it will be able to add this value to this value counter. So it will be private um, int coins value. And this coins value will be obtained from will be obtained from the game object's name and converted to integer. So I type convert. First of all, I need to use system system library be able to use the convert convert to integer 32 and here I take the name of a button and get substring from this name which will begin from the position of this divider which is underscore symbol plus one and the length of this substring will be one so i take only this one character which will be five three two or one depending on which coin this script attached so name substring index of ah, name index of this underscore symbol plus one 
and the length of, of that substring is one as well. So in the beginning, we get this coin's value. Okay, what's next? Okay, next thing is to make it possible to um, put these coins into this uh, coin hole. And I don't want just to, you know, um, put these coins when they light with this uh, coin hole. I want to be able to take this coin, drag it into this uh, coin hole, release a button, and then after I release a button, this coin drops into my vending machine. So to do that, I need a couple of, uh, not a couple, I need a variable which will be private boolean variable named mouse mouse named mouse button released I don't need update method and this mouse button released will be set to false when I click and hold left mouse button over my over my coin is game dev your full-time job not it's just a hobby so on mouse on mouse down method so when i click left mouse left mouse button over my coin and hold it down this mouse button release variable is set to false so mouse down button release false and when i release my mouse button this mouse button released is set to true so on mouse up mouse button release set to true and when it's true and when this coin is over this uh, coin hole we check we check this in on trigger is on trigger state to the method so when when my coin is over this coin hole and mouse button is released then something will happen so if if mouse button released and uh, collision collision game object game object may equals coin hole let's check it if it's correct coin hole coin hole yes that's it. this is correct so when all of this is true What does on trigger stay do? On trigger stay do it is uh, invoked every frame while one collider is overlapping another collider. So in in my case, this on trigger on trigger stay to D will be invoking every frame while I holding this uh, coin over coin hole. Okay, so when mouse button is released, 
and collision game object's name is coin hold. Then I pass a value, coin value, into the vending machine. To do that, I will be using an event. Public static event, which will be named coin coin in coin hole. So, this is an event which will be, which will take place when mouse button is released and the coin is over that coin hole. When it happens, and by the way, I need to put integer value here. So, when it happens, this coin in hole um, event will pass an information about uh, coins value into vending machine script, which we will create in a moment. So, when it happens, I invoke this coin in whole event and pass this coins value. And after that, I destroy my coin because I don't need it anymore. And it is inside vending machine. Destroy game object. Okay. And by the way, this is pretty it about coin, coin script, as I suppose. Yes, I think it is. Okay next script will be for vending machine i create new c sharp script sorry and name it vending vending machine vending machine yes and open it up here it is mm, i need some water be right back and I'm back so vending machine Let's remove this for now and let's see what we will have inside this vending machine script. So, this vending machine will control several game objects, which are coin sum and coin sum and what else? And the key. So, to control coin sum game object, to be able to change this value inside this uh, on this display, we need. Since I since I use Text Mesh Pro text, I need to import Text Mesh Pro library. Yes. And also, mm, this vending machine will be responsible for scene reloading when this, when that red button will be clicked. So for doing that, I need to use scene management library. So using using Unity engine, Unity engine scene management there we go that's it that's it for using different libraries okay so to control that text mesh pro game object 
which is coin sum one. I use realize field attribute to make it possible to assign this assign this variable in the inspector so it will be private text mesh text mesh raw u g u y and let's call it coin coin some text like this and since we're here and since we're here i drag and drop this vending machine script into vending machine game object and now i can assign this coin some text in the inspector so i take this coin sum coin sum game object and drag and drop it into this coin sum text slot now i can change a text in this field to the script okay next game object to control will be a key so let's realize field attribute again private um, game object key and again while we're here i select vending machine and drag and drop key game object right here there we go and of course to uh To keep hmm, the amount of uh, money we put inside this vending machine, we need a variable which will be private int coin sum coin sum coin sum value. Next step is to create is to assign all of this. Uh, variables into start method start method so coin sum text text will be initially say zero let's check it out i hit play now it's 99 and now it's zero so no coins inside vending machine and no money inside it. Okay, next one is is to reset coin sum value and set it to zero because no money inside. So when this uh, vending machine will receive information from the coin so which coin is put inside the vending machine uh, as we remember this information is coins value so to make it possible to receive this information i need to subscribe to this event so when this event happens some uh, method will be invoked inside this vending machine script and let's create this method it will be private void add coin add coins value and check result and check result and this method will take a parameter which is value which is that coin value let it be empty for now so to subscribe to that event we doing i do the following so coin coin in coin hole plus 
plus equal this method's name. So now, let's save the script. When coin passes this value to vending machine script, this method will be invoked using that coin's value as a value. So when it happens, first thing we do is to add this value to coin sum value. So coins sum value plus equal value plus equal value. And then we display this coin sum value on our display. So coins sum text text becomes x becomes equal to mm, coin sum value converted to to string and when it's when it's done we need to check if we put enough money into our vending machine so as we i guess remember we need to put a 38 box inside it so if if coins uh, value equals to 38 we will be invoking a, a method which is named as release really release key this method isn't created yet so let's create it uh, private void really let me just copy and paste it there we go There we go. So here, uh, and by the way, for a start, when the game is started, I mustn't be able to pick this key and open the door until I put enough money into my vending machine. So to prevent to prevent this from happening I set a key collider I disable key collider in start method of vending machine script so key get component any 2d collider and enable equals to so now i won't be able to drag my key until i put enough money into the vending machine let's check it out yes now i can't take it okay so when i release the key first of all i need to revert it back so key component blah, blah, blah. set to true so when i have enough money in the vending machine i can take the key and open the door but when i have enough money this key should appear here so let's see what uh, y axis value should be here when this key is inside this niche. So I take this. I take the key and bring it about here and check what value I have here. Let it be. Minus 
and I get it back. Minus 1.5, remember. So, what do I do? Is key transform position equals to new vector 2 x ver uh, x axis value stays the same so transform position x of course key key transform position x and uh, y value will be minus 1.5. There it is. Okay. Important thing about the subscription to some event is that we need to unsubscribe from this event to avoid some null reference exception issues. One of the way to do it is to do it in on destroy method. So I copy and paste it and change plus to not, not plus. Save it. And you know, now I think we can check it out how it works, because it should work pretty well. I take a coin. Yes, I put it inside the vending machine and I put two dollars into it. I take one, now it's three. I take five, now it should be eight. Yes, it's eight. I take three and it's eleven. Uh, I'm out of coins, so of course it's not the best way to do it manually, but as I said before, I just want to keep it simple. So I select these coins and duplicate them several times. Again, it's not the best way to do it. Your voice is too low, what do you mean? I think it's pretty fine. It was... My voice today is just like it was yesterday and I didn't change it. I didn't change anything. So, okay. Let's spread this coins around the scene. Again, it's not the best way to do it. There we go. Let's hit play and check it out. So I need to put $38 into my vending machine. I put five. 8, I put 10, 15, 20, 25, 28, 20, 31, 33, 34, uh, uh, I think I can put 3 here and 1. Yes. I bought a key and I can open it. I can... I can open the door with a key. But since I didn't create a door script yet, nothing working. So let's create the next script. Oh no. One more thing about uh, bending machine and this red button. As I said before, I want to put some function on this button which will be scene reloading. 
So inside this uh, vending machine script, I create new method, which will be public void reload scene. So when this what the hell? when this method is invoked, scene will be reloaded. So scene manager load scene. Scene manager again. Uh, load no. Get active scene. Build index. So the current scene will be loaded using this line. Save the script. And now, to make it possible to invoke this method, I need to tune my reset button. So I select it. Go to this on click function, click plus, and drag and drop vending machine game object into this slot and select reload scene method from this vending machine script. There it is. Let's check it out. For example, I put uh, $8 in here and want to reset my scene. I don't know why, but I want to reset it, so I press this button and everything works just fine. Okay. Mm. The next step is to create a door script, which will be opening when key touches it. Not just touches, but also when the button is released over that door. So our door has a box collider. And open this door script here. Let's see what's inside of it. It's pretty simple one is by the way. So first of all we need to control that arrow arrow game object which is behind the, the door. So I won't be able to click it in the beginning. So again, serialize fill attribute will help me to assign this in inspector, private, game object, arrow, arrow. And in start method, I set this arrow in an active state. Active false. Yes, false. Save the script. While we're here, so I won't forget it later. I didn't add the script to door, so I take this door script, drag and drop it, drag and drop it to door, and now I can assign this arrow game object here. Let's check it out. Arrow is active, and when I when I hit play, oops. When I hit play, it should be inactive. Yes, it's inactive. Okay, next step here is to um, mm, I didn't create it key script by the way. Yes, before continue with door script, I should create key script. So, right click here and create key script. Key. Open it up, and what do we need to do here? As I did with a coin script, I will be using an event here. So, the door. Mm, will receive an information that it can be opened. So using system system library and here public public static event of action 
without any information be best. Door can be opened. So, when this event happens, door will get to know that it can be opened. When it happens, it happens when I drag a key to the door and release left mouse button. So again, here I need a variable which is in and again it will be called mouse button released mouse button released i don't need these methods here so in on mouse down method i set this mouse button released to false and when left mouse button is released this mouse button released is set to true so on mouse up mouse button released is true and again as we did in uh, where we did it yes as we did in coin script we invoke on trigger on trigger stay which will be invoked when i hold a key above the door so when it happens if collision collision game object name equals to door so by holding my key over the door and if in this if at this moment i release a button so mouse button is released then we invoke this event so door door can be opened and after that i destroy the door so it's kind of opened game object and again To be able for door to get this information that door can be opened this door should be subscribed to this event so what do we do in start method is e door can be opened plus equals open door Yes, this method isn't created yet, so let's create it. Private void open door. And what we do here is set this arrow game object to active state, set active true, and destroy destroy a door ah we were destroying not a door here we were destroying a key so we don't need a key anymore and here we destroy a door save the script and again once we subscribed we should unsubscribe so on destroy 
and unsubscribe from this event. And I guess this is pretty it. Let's check it out. Hit start and let's put some money into this vending machine to buy a key. Seven thirty eight keys released, and and of course, it doesn't work at the first time. Why I don't know, let's figure it out. And of course, because I didn't add key script to the key, now I did it, and let's check it out one more time. Put some money. Six thirty seven thirty eight key released and door again not not opening why ah. because to detect collisions between two game objects I need to have a collide a uh, a rigid body on one of this game object so I select the key and of course I forgot to do that so rigid body to the kinematic and sleeping mode never slip now it should work let's see put some money Thirty-seven, thirty-eight. Take the key. Open the door. Yes, finally it works. But nothing happens when I click this arrow button. So let's fix it and create great button script. Uh, arrow script. Arrow. Open it up. And here we'll be just <coughs> put some or maybe reload this scene again. Why not? So using Unity Engine C management down. Maybe I just copy and paste this line from here to here save the script and final check put some money uh, uh, uh. ah yeah 35 plus 3 it's 38 it doesn't work because I didn't add arrow script to the arrow final final check 5 10 15 20 23 26 29 32 34 36 38 open scene reloaded okay i guess this is it we did it finally in one hour and nine minutes not very bad so thank you for watching thank you for being with me really hope to see you next time and as usual this yeah, awesome. Thank you very much. Awesome. Uh, as usual, this project will be available by link in the description of this stream. And this stream will be available, I think, in a couple of hours on my 
channel because uh, YouTube need to take some time to process it. Anyway, thank you very much for coming. Thank you very much for watching. Thanks again. See you next time. Bye bye. Take care. Sasha. Yes, that's me. You're a bit, a bit too late, Wimus. We're just about to finish. Okay, see you guys. Thanks again. See you later. Bye-bye.